all your music in one place, one meal, and other audiophile music player for Raspberry Pi we will have a look at today. We'll go through again the entire installation step by step together. I'll show you the user interface on multiple devices. We'll be using as a source of our music some local files again and also I'll be using Tidal because Volumio has a nice feature which is a native integration of Tidal and Obus. Volumio has an extensive community because I believe that was the first player and that's actually the most known player people use first time when they buy a Raspberry Pi and decide to use it as a music streamer, music player. So it's very well known for everybody. So let's go through it and let's go through the installation. When we go to a download page, we can see that Volumio supports multiple platforms, not just Raspberry Pi, but also other single board computers like Odroid, Sparky, Asus ThinkBoard and also PC, which is interesting and nice. Uh, but we'll be using Raspberry Pi 4. What is important to mention is that Volumio is not completely free if you want to use more than one device, like multiple multi-room streaming, for example, to multiple Raspberry Pis. And also, if you would like to use Tidal and Obus natively integrated in Volumio, you have to pay for at least for the subscription called Virtuoso, which I'll show you and I'll be using. I'll show you also how it works when you don't want to pay when you uh, have the Volumio free account. Now there is a bit higher plan as well called Superstar, which allows you to use up to six devices so you can remotely control with Volumio. And also it offers as a new thing, uh, extensive metadata informations for your albums and artists. And it's not on that level of Rune, but it's that kind of try to, to reach a little bit more metadata informations about your favorite bands and uh, albums which is nice, but it's not uh, free. As you can see, it's uh, 66.99 per year. Uh, Virtuoso is about 30 per year. Uh, you can pay monthly as well, which is three euros. So you have approximately 20% saving when you go for the annual plan. So let's download the ISO, which is around three, 400 megabytes, if I'm not mistaken. When we unzip it, it's around 2.8. 2.9. I'll be using Rufus again. I'll be using my 128 gigabytes micro SD card, which I'll be using as a storage for my test files for some local streaming, local playback. So let's flash the ISO. I'll speed it up and I'll get back to you when we boot up. Okay, so this is how it looks like when you boot up Volume your first time. You have a seven step guide for the finalization of the installation. Uh, we have to set up language, should be English, name, and most importantly, output. Volumio supports, I believe, all currently available and well-known hardware interfaces or DAX and digital transports from uh, Allo, High Fiber, and so on. But I'll be using for this demonstration again my SMSL. USB DAC, so I'll select as an output that. So I'll choose the full set of options. Network, I'll skip because I'll be, I uh, won't be using Wi Fi. Section music allows you to, if you connect it via USB or external hard drive, you can select it and mount it right now. And as a final step, is a congratulation and uh, the final step, you have to create your account. If you didn't create it, you have to create it. Let's go through it. Okay, so I'll create the account. So you can see first how it works when you have a free account and how we can actually use it even for a title as a UPN PL renderer. But let's first go through some main settings. So let's go to system. As you can see, you can change the name. Check for the updates, we are on the latest version 2.806, so there is no update. Sources, again, you can select your drive. UPnP render is active by default, SharePoint as well, DLNA as well. Bluetooth is off, 
Okay, here as we can see, because we are on a free account at the moment, we can see here is a notice about the streaming services and asking us to upgrade so we can use Tideline Obus and higher as audio, as many additional plugins. We'll do that later on so you'll see how it will change and opens up with Tidal and Obus login input informations. As you can see here, here we are in that kind of uh, new layout. There is also the classic layout, classic layout for the user interface. I'll show you later on. But with this particular layout, we have the option to customize the menu on the left. So you can switch off particular pre-selected uh, options like favorites, playlists, music library, those shortcuts. When we uh, have the subscription and when we have title, title will appear there as well. So we have a shortcut to title as well. Okay. Um, all right, so let's go through some other options. Appearance. Okay, we can change the language. Now, what is nice here is that you can use different backgrounds. Some are pre-selected, or you can even upload your own, or you can use just a solid color. As a user interface, as I said, we are in the new contemporary layout, but we can switch to classic one, which I actually prefer, especially for a use on a small tablet, which will all, which I'll be using is 8 inch tablet for me still the cover art is in both layouts kind of small let's go back to its contemporary for now so okay on the bottom as you can see we have a queue we have a volume slider some playback options and, and the cover on the left. Volume is controlled by software by default, but we can switch that to a hardware. If you have a USB dock or a head attached on a Raspberry Pi. Plugins, we can see there is a huge uh, possibility to and support for other services like Spotify, Squeeze Light Player, radios, podcasts even support for some other hardware like from Audiophonics and um, just boom so you can customize it to your liking okay you can set up an alarm sleep so let's copy our local file so you can see something in our music library and how it looks okay so as we can see we can switch to different layouts we can go through albums which are as i can see in correct high resolution which is nice to see Okay, now we can see on the left side in the duration bar, circle bar, we can see our bitrate and also in the bottom we can see what kind of file that is. In my case it's FLAC. When we switch to a classic view we can see that the menu on the left side disappeared and it's instead on the right side after a click. Okay, you can go through artists. These pictures of artists, I believe those are sourced from the internet as some kind of metadata information which is nice to see okay so now let's try to use because volumio is switched on as a upnp renderer so let's go to my phone and try to use this free account free subscription and stream title to volumio if it works and as you can see it works perfectly fine no problem whatsoever so if you don't mind using your phone as another remote you can still use Title and Obus or any service you would like and you don't need to pay for any subscription. I personally like the integration because I don't like using phone as a secondary remote. I prefer and uh, like the um, native integration. So I'll show you how it works. Now let's switch to Virtuoso subscription so you can see how it works. Okay, so now when we go to sources and plugins, you can see we have to restart. Okay, so we have to restart. After restart, if we go back to plugins, you can see we have a title and obus there. So I'll be putting my login information there and let's see how it integrates with Volumio. 
Alright, so as I said before, on the left side appear as another item title and the integration as you can see is like that. I can go through my playlists, I can go through my favorite albums, artists and tracks. But what is missing here and it's kind of important for me is something which is called entitled My Mixes. That's the way, one of the ways how I look for a new music. It's basically generated based on my music I listen to, some new music mixed with my already listened music. Like that I can discover and find new music. So for me that section is very important and I'm really sorry that it's not integrated. But let's go through my playlist first so you can see how it works. Okay, I can see all my playlists here, it's fine. And let's try to stream something from Tidal, like before, but natively. We have also something like a small M behind the name of the title, which means master quality. So Volumio is capable to play master quality tracks. And as you can see, it works just fine. So let's go and see how Volumio looks on a mobile and also on a tablet and then we can do some conclusion about this particular player. Okay, so as we can see, kind of to be our streaming title from the native interface and Volumio looks nice in that contemporary layout. Everything feels nicely organized, nothing is big, the font size, everything I like as it is. All the thumbnails seems perfectly fine, albums all in high res, the size is pretty fine, I like it. Okay, that's the queue, that's the playlist. You can search for items. Let's change the layout to classic one, so you can see how it will look like on a mobile. Okay, now you can see the change. The art cover is much bigger. It's basically full screen. The inside interface, like the library icons and everything remain the same. It's basically for the playback for the home screen change, otherwise everything seems the same. I mean the size of those icons and everything. Yeah, I mean, some people can like this one. Okay, so let's have a look how it looks on tablet. This is the contemporary layout. As you can see on a tablet in a landscape mode, the album cover is so small, so the entire place, even the user interface, like internal user interface, doesn't scale down. You can see the bottom part, sometimes it's really big. Basically everything is centered for some reason, doesn't use the entire space in a kind of efficient way for me. It's mostly just the background, that's it. It shows that it's more, you see, even the albums, how huge they are, all the thumbnails and icons are really big. You see how when you try to search or do something, like basically you have minimal space, some buttons are not responsive. Again, everything centered. It's very clear that it's, the design is based uh, and aimed for portrait mode, not for landscape kind of mode when it comes to a tablet. Switching to a classic mode helps. As you can see now, finally, it's more better organized. But still, it's a bit, I don't know, unbalanced for me. I mean, the controls for volume and progress bar is okay, but for example, the text, the name of the album, and uh, again, the thumb thumbnails and albums, Everything huge, big, should be much smaller. Seems like nobody actually tested this particular player in a landscape mode on a tablet. Okay, when we switch to a portrait mode, everything now looks much better. Okay, so let's do some conclusion about Volumio, what I think about it, what I like about it, what I found out. There are a couple of things which I would like to point out, which I'm not completely happy about. Overall, I would say uh, this is that kind of player, as I said, for anyone who is just starting with uh, a Raspberry Pi and, and will be using it as a 
streaming player. Usually first player you install is Volumio. The question of those subscriptions, I don't know. I think um, my personal opinion is uh, I don't mind paying three euros monthly, but some people maybe will not like it as an uh, additional cost for already expensive streaming service they pay. Yeah, I think that's kind of, you know, you can choose another option if you don't mind to use your phone as that kind of middle point. You can use UPnP and you don't need to have the subscription at all. When it comes to overall design and layout, I still feel in a desktop and a tablet view, it still needs some improvements. Um, basically a contemporary design for a landscape tablet um, use kind of, especially in a full screen, it's unusable. I mean, if something is too small, the interface is too big, that needs some work. In my opinion, it really needs some design changes. So it adapts more. On a mobile, I think it's very nice. It looks very clean. On a desktop, it's a question of an opinion. I prefer more cleaner look. But overall, the usability and intuitiveness of the user interface is, I think, one of the best. The functionality of the interface is very good. What I found out was a kind of strange thing, which I would like to point out, because I noticed somebody on, a, on some particular forums mentioned that as well. When you have a playlist, when you, for example, start playing a playlist from a title and you switch a shuffle mode, what happens is that it's not respecting the playlist as a cue, but it actually shuffles all your music. So not just the title, but also all local music. Uh, so it's kind of strange. I, it kind of bothered me. I felt like that I should, uh, should point it out. Maybe it will be fixed later on. Otherwise, uh, the functionality is perfect nothing to criticize now the actual integration of title is for basically a discovery of a new music in a way of my mixes is for me very important and it's missing there so that's for me kind of bummer um, maybe some people will not make a big deal from it but for me it is a big deal especially if you pay extra three euros monthly for the integration so i would like to have a complete uh, experience, a complete implementation of everything what the title actually offers to me when I use it as a standalone application on uh, my desktop or as a standalone application on my phone. So that would be nice. And then I would appreciate because that's something I use every day. Overall, I think it's a great player for the beginning. So I highly recommend it. The question of donation and what I mentioned and those subscriptions, that's something completely up to you. And I believe a lot of people will be very happy with this player. That's my take on Volumio, so thank you for watching. <laughs>